Hello and welcome back to the Kotlin YouTube channel. Kotlin 1.8 released recently and in this video I will unpack the new features that the Kotlin team prepared for you in the new release. As it usually is with the standard library, we make some of the experimental functions stable and add the new ones as preview. I will quickly walk through the functions that change the status from experimental to stable and then we will explore some of the new functions that were added into the standard library. Here is the list of experimental standard library functions that are now stable. You can see that the cube root function, time unit conversion functions, and the extensions for Java optional class got the new status. And we also added some new experimental functions to the library. Those are the comparable and subtractable time marks and Java NIO file path extensions for recursive deleting and copying. Okay, let's take a look at the functions that are made stable in this release. If you are so lucky that your project requires calculating cubic roots, you now have a stable standard library function for this purpose. The CBRT function accepts doubles and floats as parameters and the usage is pretty straightforward. Just import the function and supply double or float value as an argument as you can see in the example. The unit conversion functions in the Kotlin time package are also stable now. Introduced as experimental in 1.6, these functions improve interoperability between Kotlin and Java. You can now easily convert between Java Util Concurrent Time Unit and Kotlin Time Duration Unit instances. And the experimental extension functions for Java Optional were introduced in Kotlin 1.7. These functions can be used to conveniently work with optional objects with Kotlin 1.8. These functions are marked as stable and you don't need to opt in to use them. So this was a quick roundup of the functions that are now made stable in the standard library. Let's take a look at the new experimental functions that were added in Kotlin 1.8. So first of all, we added comparable and subtractable time marks. This is an experimental API, so you have to use the opt-in annotation to use it. Before 1.8, if you wanted to calculate the time difference between the multiple time marks and the moment of now, you could only call the elapsed now function on each time mark one at a time. This made it difficult for you to compare the results because the different elapsed now function calls couldn't be executed at exactly the same time. So in my example here, you can see that there are two time marks and then we are calling the elapsed now function on each of them separately which means that these calls are made at the different time moments. So if I execute this code, I will actually see that the results are inconsistent because the elapsed now function calls are made at the different points of time. To solve this, in 1.8, you can subtract and compare the time marks from the same time source. Now you can create a new time mark instance to represent the now moment and subtract the other time marks from it. This way, the results you collect from these calculations are guaranteed to be relative to each other. And since the time marks are now comparable, you can validate if one time mark is captured later than the other. In this release, we also introduced two new extension functions for the Java NIO file path class that allow you to recursively copy and delete a directory and its contents. These functions are called copy to recursively and delete recursively. And let's explore how the recursive copy function works. Of course, it's an experimental API, so we have to use the opt-in annotation to enable it. We have a source directory which contents we want to copy and a destination directory. So intuitively, we can just invoke the copy to recursive function on the source and supply the destination as a parameter. However, if you have written such code before, you probably know that copying files might be a bit more complicated than this. For instance, we may want to specify how to handle the symbolic links. If the parameter is set to false, then the call will copy the symbolic link itself, but not its target. But if the parameter is true, then the function will copy the link target recursively as well. I can also specify if the function should overwrite the existing entries in the destination directory, if the parameter is false, effectively, the function call will perform as a directory merge operation between the source and the destination by adding only the missing entries to the destination. 
You can also define what should happen if an exception occurs while copying the files. For that, you should supply a Lambda expression where you can implement your custom behavior, for instance, log an error message. Then the expression should return on error result instance that indicates how to proceed. Either we skip copying the entry or terminate the process. If we don't supply the override parameter, we will actually use an overload version of the copy function where we can provide a custom action for copying the entries. For instance, we may implement our custom logic depending on the name of the files in the directory. The lambda expression that we supply as a parameter should return copy action result indicating whether the process should continue, skip or terminate. So these are the new additions to Kotlin standard library in 1.8. As usual, we are keen on hearing back from you if these functions satisfy your needs and maybe there are scenarios that we should pay attention to. There are more videos coming about Kotlin 1.8 release, check out the description for the links below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Thank you for listening and have a nice Kotlin!